So part one of boards I just got over with about seven weeks ago today. And here are my thoughts on boards. So we just got our scores back and I'll tell you at the very end of this video how I did. But this video will be more focused on what are the contents of boards, how can you prepare for boards, and what I did to prepare for boards. So let's get right into it. What is on this part one of boards? Well, the NBEO, it's called what well, the National Boards of Examiners of Optometry. This is part one, the applied basic science part. And there's a couple of ways I like to describe it. The first way is like a fun facts trivia quiz that goes on for eight hours about things that you've touched on even a little bit in optometry school. And some of them uh, might even come from things you've never learned in optometry school and are going to not even be able to be found in a lot of the board's prep material. So I don't know how I was supposed to know some of these things, but you know, I guess some people do. Uh, but that's the first way that people describe it. I like to also describe it as um, just all of the parts of optometry that won't be useful when you're a doctor, but you have to learn in optometry school. So a lot of optics heavy things, a lot of um, drug interactions that you won't use on a daily basis, everything that doesn't feel super relevant. And that's part one. And as you know, dumb as it sounds to say out loud, every optometrist has to be able to pass this to become an optometrist in the United States. And so, you know, love it or hate it, uh, hopefully it changes in the future, but um, about 67% of people pass this exam, at least if the national trend continues for this year. I don't know the national averages for this year, but at least in our school, it seems pretty similar. And so that being said, one out of every three people don't pass their first time. You know, there's an ultimate pass rate of 80 plus. Um, but some of the best doctors that I know of had to take boards multiple times to pass them. And so, you know, prepare yourself. This is going to be a hard exam, but I believe in you and I know you can do it. And so there are a couple of different ways that you can prepare for boards. The first is by going to optometry school and reviewing your notes because optometry schools in theory should teach you every single thing you need to know to be able to pass boards. And I'm sure if you're someone who, you know, can remember a hundred percent of the things that you have ever learned in the class in optometry school, you will be able to pass boards, you know, fine. But uh, there's a lot of things that are pretty low yield and maybe not taught as much or, you know, you know, glossed over completely. And so usually people don't just, you know, go in without any outside preparation. There's a couple of different outside preparations that you can do. The first one being OptoPrep. What OptoPrep is, is it's a website and an app that has 2000 plus practice questions. Uh, it's styled just like boards. And they have a free subscription that you can test out where they email you a question every single day to uh, get a feel of what OptoPrep is like. So you can go ahead and sign up for that. Um, but OptoPrep is um, a good indication of how boards is. Some people say it's a little bit harder than boards, but from the questions that I did, I thought that it was about on par with how boards uh, is. And so, you know, just a bunch of practice problems. They have some other resources in there too, um, like little, you know, quick pages and explanations and stuff. But the majority of the content in OptoPrep is practice problems. Now we have on the other side, KMK, which is a resource that a couple of friends, um, Kyle, M, and K, uh, they all got together, you know, 15, 20 years ago and said, there's not a lot of study material out there. Um, let's go ahead and compile everything we know and get some study materials out there. So it started with just like a book and other materials, but now it's expanded to a kind of an online course with some videos. And they also do some one-on-one -on -one tutoring if you pay for the higher tiers. And, you know, this KMK is a widely used resource now. And, um, you know, it's pretty expensive. OptoPrep's expensive too, but KMK is particularly uh, very expensive, uh, at least compared to a lot of other, you know, 
study materials out there. But I have heard KMK widely recommended uh, from a lot of people who pass boards. And I know a lot of people who use, you know, all these study materials that don't pass either. So don't take it as, you know, if you buy this, you'll pass. But a lot of people do use these two main resources. A third one that I don't hear a lot of people talking about uh, that I know a couple of people who use this year is called OD Questions. And it was this one was started by an ophthalmologist. And they just said, hey, optometrists need to know some of this stuff too. So they made some of their questions more optometry specific. And it's really cheap. I signed up to get a couple of free questions on their website as well. And how I would describe them is, you know, the content you need to know for boards is there. But I don't think they ask it in the style that boards asks it. And so uh, OD questions is a great resource. I'm sure you could learn a lot from it. Um, but it's still pretty new and it's not as fine tuned as OptoPrep or KMK. But you know, it's a great resource that's out there. Uh, other stuff, um, you know, I know there's a lot of study materials that go around between schools. Berkeley has their own like boards prep uh, book that they have out there too. And so um, really you can go into it with any of the combinations of study materials that you feel like uh, you need. What I ended up doing for preparing for boards is I kind of took the same route that I did in preparing for the OAT, the optometry admissions test, where I thought that I thought that I was confident in my ability to learn on my own. And I um, did a lot of self-study. And so for the OAT, I didn't buy any prep materials. I just got an old Kaplan book that I, I don't know, borrowed from someone for a couple of weeks. And I read through that and um, went through class notes and took it. And I'm sure I can have a video on how my OAT went as well. And that's kind of the same thing I did for boards, although this is a much more important test than the OAT. And so I did put a lot more effort into this one. But what I did is I got an old KMK book off of a doctor I used to work for. And, um, you know, it was way outdated, but, you know, the core material is still there. And so, you know, it's not going to be as great as if I would have bought KMK. But um, I got that. I did a lot of self self study from lecture notes uh, from that old book. And then my main resource that I loved a lot was my study group. I had about uh, a little group that get together. We tried to get together every single day for about an hour for almost seven, eight months leading up to boards. So from like August down until, you know, March, we tried to get together as much as we could every single day to at least spend about an hour marinating in the boards topics. And I think that was the best thing that I did for me. Now, both the people in my study group, uh, both of them had OptoPrep and KMK. So I did get a lot of exposure to some of their materials. But the majority of studying that I did was on my own. And this being said, just to know that it's possible if you don't want to rely on other materials that you can do it on your own. Um, I'll see if I can make the editing work. But right here, I'll show my score. So when board scores come out, you'll get an email. Um, almost, you know, it's probably going to be exactly seven weeks from when you take it. They will release scores. It's about what happened this year uh other years i've heard it's pretty similar like the last day they can release it they will you'll get an email to log in to the account that you use to sign up for boards and it'll just it'd be kind of confusing because there's just like one line and it has a random number and then a p or an f after it if you did get an f or a fail um it will be read and so if you're confused and don't know if you passed or not, you probably passed because your P will be just in you know, black after the, the letters. But it does give you a nice breakdown of how you did. So I did pass. I got about a 450 something, um, which is pretty solid for having to study on your own. Now, would it have been easier if I would have used a study resource? Yes, but um, this video is really to just tell you how I studied and to know that it is possible for you um, to go out there and make it happen if you don't feel comfortable using any study resources.
my goal um, you know long term is to get as much resources that I've been able to use out there to you so hopefully you can expect um, some sort of help in the coming years or so as far as board preparation but I just wanted to end this by saying if you're someone that you know is scared you might not pass or someone who has not passed in you know either this time around or in the past I know that it's possible I know that um, some of the best doctors I know, I think I already mentioned this, but some of the best doctors I know had to repeat boards multiple times. And so this one test doesn't define you. Just because you're bad at memorizing fun facts doesn't mean you're going to be a bad optometrist, contrary to what other people might want you to believe. And so just know that I'm here for you. We can maybe pour some love into this comment section. Um, Congrats to the people who have passed and know that you're all going to be great optometrists if I have anything to do about it. So uh, I'm here to support you in anything you need. Reach out to me if you'd like some support or um, some extra help for boards and uh, we'll see you in the next video.